Hello everyone. I am back with another interesting topic, malware, and we will learn the various ideas around this concept like what is malware, types of malwares, history, how it replicates or spreads, and how to protect against malware. Welcome back to my channel and stay tuned till the end of this video to learn more. If you are visiting my channel for the first time, then please like, share, and subscribe. So let's begin today's session. The definition of malware as per the wikipedia the definition of malware is malware is any software intentionally designed to cause damage to a computer server client or computer network by contrast software that causes unintentional harm due to some deficiency is typically described as a software bug these malicious programs can perform a different functions such as stealing information encrypting or deleting sensitive data altering or hijacking core computing functions monitoring user users and computer activities without their knowledge now let's see the various forms of malwares exist as you can see we have different forms of malware like virus worm trojan horse zombie spyware ransomware adware backdoor and botnet There are many other forms of malware but we will focus only on the ever malware types and continue our discussion now we will see what is virus what is the purpose of creating viruses how it spreads and what are the different forms of viruses exist so a virus is the most common type of malware which can execute itself and spread by infecting other programs or files within the computer The purpose of creating a computer virus is to infect vulnerable systems, gain admin control, and steal user sensitive data. Hackers design computer viruses with malicious intent and prey on online users by tricking them. One of the easiest method by which viruses spread is through emails. Opening the attachment in the email, visiting an infected website, clicking on an executable file, or viewing an infected advertisement can cause the virus to spread to your system besides that infections also spread while connecting with already infected removable storage devices such as usb drives a computer virus operates in two ways the first one as soon as it lands on a new computer it begins to replicate the second type of virus stays inactive until someone click or execute the malicious code so It is always advisable to follow list privilege access policy within the organization. This avoids the end users to install malicious program intentionally or unintentionally in the computer system. What is worm? How it works and the origin of worms? A worm can self-replicate without a host program and typically spreads without any human interaction or directives from the malware authors. Worms can modify and delete files and they can even inject additional malicious software onto a computer sometimes a computer worm's purpose is only to make copies of itself over and over depleting system resources such as hard drive space or bandwidth by overloading a shared network in july 2010 the first computer worm used as a cyber weapon as discovered by two security researchers after a long string of incidents in iran dubbed stuxnet this worm appeared to be much more complex than the worms researchers were used to seeing now let's see what is trojan horse how it triggers and the types of trojan horses a trojan horse is designed to appear as a legitimate program in order to gain access to a system once activated trojans can execute their malicious functions a trojan horse virus works as a delivery service to the harm it carries it can perform a specific task that the cyber criminal designed it to execute of course the victim would not know the threat because the trojan horse virus is disguised as a legitimate program it can show up useful and friendly but it only does harm to their systems now the examples of trojan horse virus are exploit rootkit trojan banker trojan ddos trojan downloader and trojan dropper now what is exploit 
It contains the data or code that abuses a vulnerability within application software that is operating on your system. Rootkit, these are designed to hide certain objects or activities in your system. This can effectively prevent malicious programs being detected. Trojan Banker, its purpose is to steal your account data for online banking systems, e-payment systems and credit or debit cards. Trojan DDoS. This Trojan horse virus can start up the denial of service attack. Not only it can affect endpoint but also websites. Trojan Downloader Trojan downloaders can download and install new versions of malicious programs onto your computer, including Trojans and adware. Trojan Dropper This is used to install Trojans and other viruses into the computer. This can also conceal detection of malicious programs. Now, if you are using a weak or outdated antivirus, some of them can't scan all of the components inside this type of Trojan horse virus. So, make sure you have an updated antivirus program installed in your system. Zombie Virus A zombie virus gains access to a computer or smartphone system through the internet and takes control of its resources. It uses the infected computer as its launch pad, sending viruses, Trojan horses, or malicious data to other systems. Zombie viruses are often used to conduct DDoS attacks. Spyware is a type of malware that infects your PC or mobile device and gathers information about you, like the sites you visited, the things you download, username, password, and the emails you send and receive. In most of the cases, the functionality of any spyware threat depends on the intentions of its developer. Now, the types of spyware. Password stealers. Password stealers are applications designed to harvest passwords from infected computers. The types of collected passwords may include stored credentials from web browsers, system login credentials, so it is advisable not to store your credentials in browser or system settings. Info stealers. Info stealers are applications that scan infected computers and seek out a variety of information including username, password, email address, browser history, log file, system information, documents, spreadsheets, or other media files. Keyloggers Keyloggers also referred to as a system monitors. Keyloggers are applications designed to capture computer activity including keystrokes, websites visited, search history, email discussions, chat room dialogue, and system credentials. Ransomware it is a type of malware that prevents users from accessing their system or personal files and demands ransom payment in order to regain access. The initial version of ransomware were developed in the late 1980s and payment was to be sent via snail mail. Today, ransomware authors order that the payment be sent via cryptocurrency or credit card. There are three types of ransomwares. They are scareware, screen lockers, and encrypting ransomware. Scareware It includes cache security software and tech support scams. You might receive a pop-up message claiming that malware was discovered and the only way to get rid of it is to pay up. If you do nothing, you will be likely continue to be bombarded with pop-ups but your files are essentially safe. Screen Lockers When lock screen ransomware gets on your computer, it means you are frozen out of your PC entirely. Upon starting up your computer, a full-size window will appear, often by an official looking saying, illegal activity has been detected on your computer and you must pay a fine. Encrypting ransomware. This is the truly nasty stuff. These are the guys who snatch up your files and encrypt them, demanding payment in order to decrypt and re-deliver. The reason why this type of ransomware is so dangerous is because once cyber criminals get hold of your files, no security software or system restore can return them to you. And even if you do pay up, there is no guarantee that cyber criminals will give you those files back. Adware is unwanted software designed to throw advertisements on your screen, most often with a web browser. Adware is used to track a user's browser and downloaded history with the intent to display pop-up or banner advertisements that lure the user into making a purchase. For example, an advertiser might use cookies 
to track the web pages a user visits to better target advertising. Backdoor is a type of malware that manages to bypass security restrictions to gain unauthorized access to a computer system. In simpler words, a backdoor is a piece of code that allows others to go in and out of a system without being detected. Once this has been done, remote access is granted and hackers are able to get back into the system whenever they want at a later stage. They can then access computer resources such as databases and file servers to steal information as well as issue commands and install further malware. Botnets are group of computers that have been infected with malware. A hacker or attacker can then remotely control all of the computers in the botnet as a group to do things like send spam messages, conduct DDoS attacks, generate fake web, web traffic, serve ads to everyone in the botnet. Now that we understood the concept of malware and the different flavors, let's talk about protection. There are actually two areas to consider where protection is concerned, protective tools and user vigilance. The first is often the easiest to implement simply because you can often set and forget best in class protective softwares that manage and manages and updates itself. Users on the other hand can be prone to temptation like check out this cool website or easily led by other emotions such as fear, install this antivirus software immediately. Education is key to ensure users are aware of the risk of malware and what they can do to prevent an attack. Please like, share, subscribe and comment. Also let me know on which topic you would like to see in the next video. Till then, bye, stay home and stay safe.